buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch oh. podcast. Oh. My name is Richard, and oh. eating next to me oh. is my brother in podcasting, oh. Reed. Oh, pass me some more. Oh. What are you? What is that? It's oh. so bright. Oh, it's what like, is that? It's like raw meat. Oh. Can you pa pass me? Uh, Just hand, hand it to me. Th this is disgusting. What are Give you doing? Give me your hand. Give me your hand. No. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Ow! 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 Let's stop this. Get into it. Ghost! Ghost Facers! We're missing ghosts! We're not just we're not! We're ghosts! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're missing nightmare! We're missing dread! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're missing faceless! We're missing dead! Welcome to Ghost Facers! Today we're discussing Season 3, Episode 4... Metamorphosis. <laughs> Sorry, what what season? Season four, episode four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure this is three of four episodes in season four that have What's crazy is wrong. I'm reading season... Like, I wrote season four on here. I don't know what's wrong with right, my so brain. Right, so now you can't even blame nope, that. No, it's my brain you. doesn't work. <laughs> Am stop, I... Stop moving backwards, man. Is this a phenomenon? Am I? Is it something like a phenomenon? Do I have a tumor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, the premise of that movie is that the tumor made him better. Hmm. That's definitely not what's happening here. Oh no! I think you just have a regular tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, before we talk about this episode, we have a review. Woo! Oh my God! Two weeks in a row. This is just gonna be the same one that you read last week. Let's find out. <laughs> This one's from Facebook. Well, I almost did the drop from our other. Uh, wow. Uh, well. You also have a tumor? Yeah. We, well, we share one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called the Dr. DC podcast. With joint custody of this tumor. Uh, from Anissa Medina Castillo. Ooh. Or Castillo. I'm not sure which Very one. Nice. Uh, who goes on to say, this podcast is awesome. It is for fans who just got into the show or have been watching for years. These guys' chemistry is unrivaled. I mean, it's thick. Yeah. <laughs> How would you describe their chemistry? Thick. Thick. Two C's. <laughs> uh, and they bring facts, lore, and comedy. I'm hooked. Ooh. Thank you, Anissa. I'm hooked like that like that pastor was back in I season mean, we, one. We are in Lover's Lane. Yeah. Lover's Lane. I still, but at the time of recording, I still have not looked this up. You have to. You'll love it. Uh, this episode aired October 9th, 2008. Okay. Written by Catherine Humphrey. Directed by Kim Manners. Okie dokie. Metamorphosis 2008 is the last episode Kim Manners directs. Before his passing from lung cancer, January 25th, 2009. <laughs> oh, jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's uh, give a moment for uh, for Kim Manners, who was a fucking incredible director. Uh, fucking X-Files. Oh, jeez Louise. Yeah. I didn't know that that's what happened. He didn't just like retire or something. No. Oh, I mean, no. retired from life. Dude, come on. <laughs> He, uh, oh no, yeah, he was an incredible director. Um, well, that's really sad. So of, much of his style is like imparted on like the personality of the show, he like brought everything. what yeah. the show's look is to, yeah. to it. I mean, he, uh, yeah, he's integral to it. I mean, so much of the reason why so much X Files stuff is like associated with this because of Kim Manners. Yeah. All the like great X Files like people who are on the show is because of Kim Manners, right? And his relationship, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Kim Manners rules. Well, well, shit. So, well, yeah. That's very sad. Yes. Uh, this episode was viewed by an estimated 3.15 million viewers. So we're still in the okay. threes, which All is right. nice. Um, do you want to see the promo to see? Yep. I'm. Uh, my guess is a uh, piece of shit. Because <laughs> we dropped 400,000 um, <laughs> <laughs> viewers. Let's find out. They always do that like soft focus, weird <laughs> slow frame rate. There's like thing. screaming in the background. Like yeah, it's always like stock. Like ah! <laughs> <laughs> like the Wilhelm scream in the background. Yeah, like, ah! yeah like, 
It it's yeah, that's not a good. I mean, last week is a rare, very good promo. Yeah, yeah. We're back to business as usual. I would say this week. It's yep. kind of a bad promo. Uh, international titles for Metamorphosis. Yeah, I mean, Metamorphosis is a word. Which is why everyone nailed it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no nobody did anything different. Right. It is just metamorphosis in a money different language. No one did like hungry man dinners. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> one pound of food. <laughs> uh no, everybody Yum just... yum chomp chomp yeah. people meat. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> people loaf delicious. Oh yeah. <gasps> I would do anything for love, but I would eat you. <laughs> Was, you said people yeah, loaf yeah, and yeah. I went to meatloaf. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah, that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't bring that into this house <laughs> of ghost phasers. But yeah, yeah, everybody got it. Sorry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's a real fun segment. Featured music. There is none. No, there is one. There was one song. <laughs> Featured music. They all got it. Yeah, they all got it. Uh, we have the song called Phillips Theme. <laughs> okay. By... Hound Dog Taylor and the House Rockers. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I think the song goes something like this. A Philip, 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 he's coming, Philip. You thought it was a theme, it's Philip's theme. <laughs> Philip theme, wow, wow. <laughs> Where everybody knows you're Philip. <laughs> 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 so no one told you Philip was gonna be this way. <laughs> Philip, Philip, <laughs> Philip, Philip. <laughs> Boom, ba doom, ba doom, Philip. Oh baby, I hear Philip Philip's the calling, <laughs> our salads and scrambled eggs. <laughs> Philip's calling again. <laughs> Philip, good night. Philip themes. <laughs> Not Philip's theme. No, These are Philip themes. Yeah, Philip themes. <laughs> <laughs> Philip walked in the air, went out. <laughs> Suicide oh. is Philip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Califilip. <laughs> Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're not beating that holy shit oh my god <laughs> Jesus Christ we can't beat that fill <laughs> No, no, you were already on top. Yeah. Cut that last one out. Yeah. <laughs> Remember uh, me as the legend I was. Yeah. <laughs> what the bastards you turned into. <laughs> TV Guide describes this episode oh. as Sam and Dean encounter a man with a mysterious infection that transforms him into a flesh eating monster. Sam thinks the man can be changed the, uh, through reason to curb his newfound instincts, but Dean believes that the most humane thing is to do is to kill him. Yeah. I think you probably just. That first sentence was fine, but <laughs> oh, I don't think I needed those other two. Well, before we talk about, <laughs> I believe that Sam and Dean have a difference of opinion. Yeah, I'm That's sure what I like about season four. We're really like messing with the format. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before we start what talking, what if to... these brothers didn't <laughs> always see eye to eye? Boom, ba doom, 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 Philip, Philip, California. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's so dumb. We're so dumb. Yep. People keep telling us comedy is part of our podcast. We should start trying to do it. Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> it's more of like a we hope for. If we keep mentioning it, maybe they'll start doing it. <laughs> I mean, I just can't believe we've been actually recording these and actually releasing them. Oh. Was I supposed to be doing that? Uh-oh. I just want to release any other people's good podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get into today's thoughts, let's talk about some of the real world lore. 
about this week's monster. Let's Holy see what shit. the lore says about Rugaru. Oh my god, that's right, baby. Oh my god. Yeah, we're talking. Oh, about- uh, hold on. Before we do that. How uh, dare you? Sorry. My segment. You've been interrupting me this whole time. It's fine. I don't see how that's relevant. So <laughs> I I, I had to bring this up because it, it's relevant to the show. Okay. Uh, I got a message from um, somebody from, uh, uh, from the Discord. Okay. Uh, Domini D93, uh, who I believe is from, from- what Discord? From the This Is Rad Discord. Okay. Who is a, a fan of this show. Oh, okay. Well, hey. Thank you. Messaged me and said, "Hey, did you know the Man- Manangal uh, that we talked about on the Halloween episode right. is in a video game?" What? Yeah, and I was like, "What? A video game with a Manangal? Yes, the vampire creature that rips itself in half. Yes, that's crazy shit." So, uh, yeah, it's a J- JRPG called Shin Megami Tensei Five. Okay. It's a mouthful. Love how Japanese have the easiest video game the, names. Yeah, the game is like Pokemon, except demon. Uh, it's demons based on folklore, and mythology, oh, and philosophy. So they also sent me the photo from it. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, they they uh, then they, they go on to say, I damn near spat out my coffee when I encountered her, and have y'all to thank for knowing what she was. So thanks. Hey, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was from our, our Hunter Ween special That's right. this year. So. Love it. Sorry. Continue. Very cool. Yeah, you're only allowed to interrupt me if it's like cool and validating for something else that I also did. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, your kid's pretty rad. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Rougarou. <laughs> it's like, it sounds like, like, uh, like Scooby Doo's like eating peanut butter. Yeah, <laughs> but the question is, from where? Uh, we think we <laughs> all know. <laughs> Zoinks! <laughs> <laughs> like it feels really good, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I got a snack for you, Scoop. Uh, oh no! Uh, yeah, yeah so, it's definitely not a meal. Oh no! Oh, oh. Uh, oh man, totally. Uh, Rougarou, it Calafil- <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter. Here I come. Stick. <laughs> you can still say I here I come. Oh yeah, yeah. So a Rougarou. <laughs> It originates from a kind of combination of like Cajun and Métis and oh, Algonquin. You got that Rougarou, right? Folklore. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got a good oh, Rougarou with well, the peanut butter on the downstairs. Well, I'll see you over here. Yeah. Uh, you so, Philip, no? <laughs> the word itself is a version of the French word Lugarou, which means werewolf. Look at you. Uh, you like no French or something? Uh, uh, oh my god! Did you like live in? That should be proof. Did you like live in France or something? Yeah, le poisson, le poisson. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the legend itself, though, varies quite a bit from an actual werewolf, and it includes elements of like werewolf lore, of Wendigo lore, mm-hmm. of some other uh, some other things too. Chupacabra, yeah. Um, so. Uh, this is going to be a little weird because there's a few different versions of the lore, so I'm going to like say something and then jump around and okay. say something contradictory. So, uh, it's a very common legend in Louisiana, uh, oh, specifically Louisiana. specifically around Nolens, oh. uh, in like sugarcane fields and woods of the area. That's where it's a uh, Rougarou is said to sort of stock. Yeah, it's described as similar to a werewolf in a way, except that it has the body of a man and the head of a wolf. Whoa. With glowing red eyes. Um, so, again, many variations to this legend. In some version, I mean, the legend is often used to keep children behaving, as many kind of monster legends are. Um, it's the only way to get children to do what you say is by terrifying is, them. Yeah, by scaring them, and that never has a, any knock-on effect. Nope. Um, so, in some versions of the legend, the Rougarou specifically hunts Catholics who do not abide by the rules of Lent. Oh, my God. <laughs> In this version, supposedly breaking Lent seven years in a row will make you become a Rougarou. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think this is like a prevailing uh, theory, but it did make me laugh. So, um, There's 
uh, one possible difference between them and a werewolf is that they're not necessarily bound by the full moon lore. Uh, some aspects of the legend say that they can change form at any time. Others, it's like during the day they're in human form, but at night, regardless of status of the moon, Ruguru uh, uh, comes out. And they're meant to feast on, you know, blood and marrow, almost in a vampiric kind of way. They talk about like cattle, like with blood drained, kind of like a chupacabra, like a the cow sucker kind of thing. Um, There's a really great um, uh, punk song uh, called Chupacabra by the band Chicks Dig It. Nice. Uh, and it's like the 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 song is like I, I remember watching a skate video once and it's like, yeah, la Chupacabra, gonna reach, gonna reach, gonna reach right out and grab ya. Oh, shit. It's, it's a fucking great song. Look That's it up. fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so part of this is that. Um, Sorry, that didn't have anything to do with you. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were in the band Chicks Dig It, that'd be cool. Do I look like I was in a band called Chicks Dig It? <laughs> I mean, yes, but not because Chicks Dig It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like ironic name. Yeah, like yeah, The Bare yeah. Ladies. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so here's kind of an interesting element of this. There's, It could be that the curse lasts for 101 days. Okay. So you're a Rougarou for that long, and after that... It's the last person that you bit becomes the Rougarou. Oh my God. Is this like a it follows situation? Kind of in a way, except it doesn't come back to you, right? It's and it's a, not it's, sexually It's more like hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, which is sort of interesting and, and odd. Um, in Metis folklore, I think only like a Metis can be turned into a Rougarou, which can happen simply by looking into its eyes. Whoa. It doesn't even have to bite you. It, there's not necessarily a cannibalism aspect to it, like the Wendigo. It's like if you look into its eyes, you become a Rougarou. Okay, I'm going to say something. Sure. And it's not meant to be offensive. Okay. But I can't not so say it's it. almost certainly going to be. But I can't not do it. Okay. Do you do you think if a Metis who's in a Rougarou bites somebody, that person goes, Arr, Metis. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> I mean, listen, that could have been a lot worse. Look, I'm just... It just it's just wordplay. It's bad wordplay, but it's just wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a splinter myth that a Rougarou is like a rabbit-related creature as opposed to a wolf one, and, and those Rougarous are created by witches. Uh, <laughs> Do they also uh, have ninja abilities? It's a splinter. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's a tail, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's funny. In some of the things that I was looking at, they talk about it as a curse, and then in parentheses say, or blessing for evil people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. It's like, yeah. That's literally true of all of these. Yeah. So if you're evil, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. But yeah, it's just kind of interesting. It's sort of like a Acadian Cajun kind of folklore, very like geographically specific uh, to uh, to Louisiana. Like there is no kind of Rougarou thing beyond that. But it's interesting how it incorporates kind of Métis and Algonquin elements about like when to go and how it's you know yeah. There's there's an interesting blend of things happening in, yeah. in there, but it's a very very specific kind of folklore. Wow. Mm. Holy shit. Oh my god. Tim Allen? Philip. Can't be California. Man, home improvement. That's a good theme. It was a really good thing. That was a surprise. That was unfortunately a good show. Yeah, weirdly good show. Yeah. I very little to do with Tim Allen, I think. Yeah. All on the strength of Richard Karn. <laughs> I mean, he was pretty great on that show. And Pamela Anderson, who was also on that show for a bit. Yeah. She was uh she was more like the tool time. She worked on tool time with them, yeah. Well, it's boy meets Philip. Boy meets Philip. <laughs> <laughs> my name is philip and i'm the fastest man alive oh, <laughs> 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 
Well, the whole universe was a hot, hot Philip. Philip Deems <laughs> just moved the S. It's total, it's total chaos. Look at what happens. Well, let's get into today's episode. Philip, meet the Philip. He's a Philip in a Philip Philip. (laughs) I think we've literally squeezed every drop. No, this is comedy. We just keep going. Yeah, until people are unhappy and leave. Yeah, until we start getting like reviews rescinding previous (laughs) reviews. Yeah, you can't do that, bitch. (laughs) They're locked in. Yeah. Forever, because we copied them. Do, are they forever? I actually don't think they are. Oh my god! I think you can delete them. <laughs> oh my god! Can't cut this bit out. But okay. we gotta like we gotta get this shit together. Uh, I know. Oh no god. more Philip shit. No. Okay. okay. Here we go. So we begin the episode with the then. We start talking about Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> we get a bunch because it's to be continued we're looking at the previous episode yeah it's 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 a cool setup we also get to see a bit of before with sam using his powers yeah um and we end with castiel concerned about sam yeah you stop him or we will, we will. oh yeah then what happens <laughs> uh well no one's ever asked me that before yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 i'm actually not sure how much i'm allowed to tell you yeah. <laughs> uh we go to the now Sam and Ruby are holding a demon captive. Yeah. Sam demands information on Lilith's whereabouts, but the demon simply responds by taunting Sam. Yeah. (laughs) There's some... uh, I don't love the dialogue in this scene. Yeah. Like, oh, you're slutting around with this skank piece of shit, bitch, demon. Yeah. You're like, come on, man. Like, I know you're a demon, but, like, it's 2000. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, what you actually there was actually a deleted team where he says like I really respect sex work. It's a job. It's yeah, a can you believe this demon was demeaning someone? Yeah, <laughs> demeaning <laughs> someone. Wow. Let's go back to the Philip thing. <laughs> I also want to. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sam uses his power. Yeah. And exercises this demon. Yeah. And it saves the guy like the host. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. And then Dean shows up and is kind of like, so you want to tell me, Sam? And there's kind of yeah. a lot of tension. And we realize Dean realizes it's Ruby. And, and blah, Dean blah, has blah. now seen everything. Dean has seen everything because he's been kind of hiding yeah. and whatever. And uh, he's really good at that based on the last episode. Yeah. Okay. Here's a few episodes ago. Yeah. Maybe in our season three wrap up. I think I'm on record very recently yes. having saying. I preferred Ruby 2.0. Yep. Uh, this scene <laughs> made me instantly reverse my decision. Yep. I, listen, acting is hard. People are working hard. No one is trying to do a bad job. And also, you never know what take they're going to use or why they use it. Maybe sure. it's your bad take, but it was better for the lighting. or You know what I mean? Like, yeah. shit happens. But she's bad in this. She's not good. No. Like, wooden delivery. I think she barely knows what emotion she's meant to be conveying. Or they just picked the worst takes. Which is weird that they put her with Sam. That seems so... Acting powerhouse. (laughs) Yeah. Jared Padalecki. (laughs) Literally could never get them on this show. It just... I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, we're obviously being a little bit mean for the comedy of it, but like... It's it's a hard gig. I've been an actor. I like, I know it's hard, but like it's not good. Everyone she, look she's up. She's not good. Like I don't know what she's meant to be conveying. It's not any of the stuff we got out of uh Katie Cassidy as Ruby, yes. who actually like by contrast kills like, it. So good. I mean, I already knew she was good. I like her, but yeah, I was like, "Oh man, what was I thinking?" Oof. I was watching that scene and I was like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> At least we won't see any more of her. Yeah. It, like, really, like, sore thumb kind of moment, how, yeah. how bad it is. Yes. He is shocked to find out that the woman with Sam is Ruby. Yeah. And attacks her with the demon-killing knife, but she, but Sam intervenes, yeah. and she slams him into a wall. Yeah, she slams Dean into a wall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, or, and Sam orders Ruby to take... The man to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, Which, yeah, uh, there's some weird comment about like... Well, yeah, and Dean says something about like, oh, aren't you like a little bitch or something like that again? 
but also that like it's the shots like on her face and she just kind of like yeah yeah like there's no like <laughs> yeah cr- like you c- you can see what's missing from yes. Katie Cassidy. Like she would have like grumbled or been like, whatever you piece of shit. Like, yes. Be like, you don't know what you're talking. Like even the dialogue isn't really Ruby. It's, like part of it is part of it is the performance. And the other half is like, they're not giving her any rebuttal. Like Ruby last season would have been like, you shut the fuck up. Yes. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes. And then would leave. This Ruby just goes like, Meh. but also has a face of like almost concern, which I don't think is it, appropriate. It doesn't work. It's the problem is, is like these are supposed to be the same person, and this is drastically not. It's the, the same opposite person. of what we were talking about last week yes. about how, uh, with with Azazel, uh, like, Azazel, the two actors that play Azazel in that episode last week are both doing a great job of doing what the main Azazel actor was doing, who was doing what Jeffrey yes. D. Morgan was doing. There's a consistency and a continuity to that performance yeah. across different actors, and there it is not there for Ruby, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, Later, Sam is waiting, worried back at the hotel room when Dean storm when Dean storms in and starts pa- uh, like packing his stuff up. Yeah, and, and and Sam's like, "What are you doing? You're just leaving." And then Dean punches him a couple of times in the well, face. Well, yeah, because he grabs his arm and he heads towards the door, and Dean responds by punching him in the face twice. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Sam is trying to say like, "I'm do- I'm using it f- for good," you know, like I don't kill, you know, I don't use the knife because that kills the host most of the people that i've saved like survived. have survived you know, like i i saved more people in the last 5 months when you were gone than we normally save in a year like this is good i'm taking a bad thing and doing good with it and dean's just like oh is that what ruby is telling you yeah um but he's like you left you went to hell and i had to keep yeah. fighting without you yeah and doesn't is this the scene where dean says like oh if it's all so good and hunky dory yes. then how come the angels told me to stop you or they would yes and sam's just like wait what because remember sam's the one who like believed in god before yeah like we yeah, knew yeah. that and dean says god that means real. god doesn't want you to do this yeah. shit and you know what as much as we give him flack this is a good jared performance yeah. in this moment because yeah. he's i mean you see you know that he knows that he fucked up by not telling dean you also know that he's trying to be like please don't like please don't like walk out like i'm trying to tell you like i i'm doing good with this like pl- like i just want you to understand and then like there's a moment of like legit fear when dean does that kind of turn about the angels yeah. and god and Jared is doing a good job of this. It's a good Sam moment of him being like, but what? No, I'm doing like, I'm doing good. How could they want me to? Oh my God. What am I like? It it very quickly changes from good to bad, but this moment is very good. Yeah. This is also it's the solid. very first time that anybody refers to Castiel as Cass. <sighs> oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, and he, he uh, uh, this is the part where it immediately goes to bad acting because the 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 phone Sam's phone starts ringing, and Sam picks it up and he's trying to convey that he's still upset. While it's that thing where it's like you have to shake off what you're currently but feeling. What he's doing is like acting as if he's got like a headache or something. Well, see, because he's like, Ugh. well, see, okay, Ugh. now now here's the thing. I couldn't tell if that was deliberate because earlier in the discussion, yeah, with Ruby, he says like when he exercises the demon he says i don't even get the headache anymore or whatever yeah and then i was like i, I was wondering if it was like the negative emotion of his fight that with feels Dean a is, bit of well i know i know i'm giving too much benefit of the doubt but i was like is this an attempt to put this layer in there and it just doesn't read or we or is it that he doesn't know he's like it's his excuse to put his hands in front of his eyes yes while he's talking <laughs> This is the thing of like conveying being upset that Jared's not great at. Yeah. He also does the weird thing with his like pouty like throat thing that like the fans like very well know. But. I actually kind of think that works. That like kind of Jared move works. Yes. The like swallow the yes. tears kind of thing. But this weird head thing. I, I see. I, I will say I did kind of read it as like maybe it's connected to that. Oh, I did. Headache comment all. from earlier. I didn't. Not that all, it. But. Not that it like means anything or yes. reads well. But I was like, oh, it's probably. Um, but they're informed uh, about a case from a hunter called Travis. Yeah. We we then flash to a man, Jack, at at dinner. Yeah. Jack is like super super hungry. Uh, he's a gross fucker. Yeah. He's. <laughs> He's eating 
two and a half steaks for dinner. Yeah, and he's eating like fucking Denethor yeah. in Lord of the yes. Rings. Like, so, and eating two and a half steaks for dinner is a lot. Honey, you're going to have your steak? And she's like, <laughs> right, Reed? Eating what? Two and a half steaks for dinner is a lot. Listen, I eat a normal human amount. Like you are the size of a human. Yeah. <laughs> like an well, amount of a human size a food. Human. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, are you in a room? I, I know. I eat the normal, normal amount human. of food that a human would eat in a day every three hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we see later while brushing his teeth, the man is now like going through some weird like physical changes. Like it's like his writhing in pain. And, and like his spine. You're hearing like getting cracking getting and stuff. and yeah. shit. It's like almost like uh, that like abomination yeah, scene in uh, yeah. Incredible Hulk or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we then go back to the boys and they're on their way to meet Travis. Dean tells Sam about his trip back in time. Which is like a fun moment because it's like, oh yeah, th this literally just happened. It's, it's also interesting too because, it I I want to. It sort of sets up that like, Dean also knows that he kind of got through to Sam. Like he's not not upset about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but he's kind of like letting it go because he sees the he saw the fear in yes. Sam or whatever, and he's like, they're actually talking. He's like, I'm gonna pull back. You know, a it's not bit. like they've been driving silently. He's. I talked he's described stuff they're having a conversation there's like tension because yeah. of what just happened but it's also like a oh, how was mom you know blah 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 like i i just i imagine the moment because they probably like had this fight they're like we gotta go and so they get in the car and they're driving and it's probably maybe like 10 minutes or something and it's quiet and dean goes yeah so i uh so i went back in time <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like Huh, okay. First question. Did you Yes, fuck mom's mom? hot. Yes, mom is super <laughs> yeah. high. Well, it's funny because Sam says, like, how was mom? How did she look? And then so you go good. and you go, like, don't ask that. And then he goes, yeah. Was she happy? And you go, Okay. Yeah. But it's like, why did you phrase it like that? He's like, Well, yeah, there's a big gap. Listen, he goes, You gotta tell me. How bangable yeah. is our mom? <laughs> He's like, How did she look? And Dean just like looks at him and like winks. Like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's just say you can call me dad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. I mean, there is a lot of fiction written that says that. But Good Lord. That's <sighs> so funny. But yeah, so it's kind of, you know, we don't need to hear all of it. But, but they're chatting and then yeah. Sam goes like, so what is this bigger plan? Like, how, like what does it even mean that he yeah. sn sneaks in and puts blood in my mouth or whatever? And then Dean goes... I didn't say anything about fucking demon's blood. Yes. And now we get the two halves of this come together. And then Sam goes, I I'm sorry, I should have told you. And Dean goes, you're saying a lot of that lately. Yeah. Fucking. I do kind of like when even the show is like, we know. Yeah. <laughs> that is a thing that the show is We know is there's a pattern at. to this behavior. Yeah, look, it makes sense. It's TV, but uh, look, we know. Yeah. Um, they arrive in Carthage, Missouri. Uh, the boys observe... Missouri. Oh, Carthage, Missouri. Uh, the boys are outside of the guys we just saw's house. Yeah. Jack, Jack M Montgomery. Montgomery, yeah. Uh, uh, a seemingly pretty normal guy uh, until he starts raven ravenously in consuming everything in the fridge, including raw meat. <laughs> How do I bring this up? Oh? The... He's obviously, the actor is obviously not eating raw meat. So whatever they've made, yeah. it's slightly redder yes. than actual like ground beef or something sure. would be. It, it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like shoveling it in his mouth and I was like, yeah. Okay. Like it looks like, because it's a little redder, it looks like it's been like seasoned or spiced or something. I'm like, I would fucking eat this. You know what's crazy is that I've seen this episode a <laughs> lot of times. And every time I see that scene, I gag. Oh, he's, it's he's so gross a bunch to of me. Turkey shit, and then he eats that ground, like that raw ground beef. And I was like, I get it. <laughs> I. I'm feeling like you might be in a rougarou. I know, like, we like to joke about the fact that I'm fat and eat a bunch, although we probably make that joke more on the other podcast than here. We but can move it over For those who are just tuning in, I'm real fat. <laughs> um, but I was, like, watching that, and I was like, it's only intellectually gross to me. Like, I have like, no visceral reaction other than I'm also hungry. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. 
I'm I am slightly concerned. At least you've never consumed long pig. I think. <laughs> I mean, well, depends on your interpretation, I guess. But yeah, I mean, never like like never eaten it like a meal. I yeah, just sort of had it in my mouth. No. <laughs> Definitely had a snack. Jesus, uh, so gross. They then visit their tipster, Travis. Uh, who knew the Winchesters when the boys were young? Yeah, I love the scene when because the the perspective of the camera, the the guys are so much taller than this guy. Oh yeah, this guy's a little short king. Yeah, uh, he's very yeah, much he's, just like wow, you guys grew up. He's got a he's got a cast on his arm. And he's like, oh man, been, how long has it been? And they're like, oh, like ten years. He goes, man, you're all growing up. It's like it's funny because they don't have the relationship like they do with Bobby. Yeah, this is more like. Running into like your dad's friend from work, yes. who remembers you from that time you came to the office. Yes, yeah, like exactly. that's kind of what this relationship is, and it's sort of funny. Like the last way. time he saw them, they were kids. Yeah, yeah. which is very but, funny. Like he looks at Sam, fully grown adult Sam, and goes, "Are you still a mathlete? How do oh, kids yeah. work? Do you do you keep mathletics going into your adulthood?" Which I do love because he <laughs> goes to say no, and Dean's like, "Oh yeah, he does. This guy fucking loves numbers." <laughs> That's very funny. I do like that. Anytime it's like, he's like, look, I'm mad at him, but I'll take any chance to fucking make fun of him. Yeah. yeah and Dean really kind of goes in in this scene on Sam. He's kind of ripping him a bunch. Oh, 100%. And, and in a future scene, too. Um, but uh, he tells them that, he, uh, uh, Travis tells them that he killed Jack's father, which is why, because they're like, well, how do you know that this guy is on a Rougarou? Because yeah. he's like, this is what this guy is. He was a Rougarou. And he says, like, he didn't know that the wife of the, wife his, the guy's was dad pregnant yes. until it was too late and she gave the kid up for adoption and he couldn't find yeah and the guys were like what do you mean you couldn't find him like you're a fucking hunter and he's like maybe i just didn't want to kill yeah a he's kid. like i want like, to kill a kid or something so he's like i wanted to make sure i have the right guy yeah we learn a little bit about the show's version of rougarous here which is that um it starts as this like ravenous kind of hunger yeah and it's fine for a bit, and then you start wanting just meat. And then you start wanting just the bloody raw kind. Yeah. And then eventually, it always leads to, as he says, long pig, which Dean is like, that's my new favorite word, meaning human meat. Yes. And he says, once they take that bite, they change quickly and permanently into a full Rougarou. Yeah. And they so like- it's like a, there's like a, a tipping point moment yeah. where once they have that bite of human flesh, it's once, over. Once you go long pig, you, 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 you never go, go long pig. Oh, no, that doesn't work, but it works. <laughs> I do love, so this episode has like, I've been calling like human meat long pig for years since yeah, watching yeah. this episode. Like this is no, like, I, I, I call it a long pig yeah. because of this. That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's also a funnier scene later on because Dean really likes that word. I call it the other, other, other white meat. <laughs> there's, it's just called the other, other white meat. Why is what's the third other? Uh oh, rhino. Oh, I don't know. Delicious. Uh, we then see Jack at a bar. He's like eating a f- like he's just f- like a whole bowl of peanuts. He's like, can I get another drink and more peanuts? Yes, because uh, he kind of freaks out at 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 his because his, his wife like his wife cuts, cuts her, her hand, finger yeah. and he's like. <sighs> and he's like, I gotta go. And she's like, I gotta go get stitches. And he's like, bye. And he yeah. like runs away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then he picks a, a fight with a guy who's harassing a, a woman at the bar. Yeah, it, I, I like this scene because it, it's not just that he's hungry and eating the peanuts. It's also that he's like losing inhibition control. Yes. So he sees someone harassing him where maybe normally he would just be like, don't please. Or he would maybe not even intervene at all. He's just like, hey, fuck face. Yeah, get, get away yeah. from it. I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> yeah, he's like instantly aggressive and walks up to the guy's like, you sure you want to do this guy? And he's like, you know what? I actually I do. do, yeah. And the guy tries to punch him. He grabs his wrist, just breaks his fucking wrist off so his bone comes like, through the, his hand. It's fucked his up. His forearm bones are coming through the bottom of his it's wrist. It's so visceral. And then he kind of looks at that. He's like, huh. Oh. And even the woman's like, oh my God. Yeah, he's like, I don't think I needed that vigorous. Of a that guy was my brother. <laughs> Um, what he came back in step, time step brother this guy just came back in yeah. time uh. <laughs> you know you can't fight the instinct to fuck your siblings when you go back in time Jesus Christ <laughs> so fucked up uh, <gasps> back at the motel Travis and Dean are preparing to burn Jack to death by they're like, building a bunch of like do it yourself flamethrowers basically 
And uh, Sam basically is, is starts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Travis says the only way to kill them is to burn them alive, torch them alive. Yeah. Uh, and Sam, uh, which says, I guess is kind of redundant because you can't torch the dead. Yes. Because you can't kill them unless you torch them. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, so Sam does. Sam says he's done some research, and Travis is immediately like, "What? Like my fucking information isn't good enough for you?" I mean, okay, boomer. Let's, yeah. Let's yeah. Like, yeah. You know everything. Yeah. But <laughs> which is funny because then Dean steps in and goes, oh, "Look, this guy's fucking horny for research. All right, like, yeah." I think I saw him jerk off to a book once. Yeah. <laughs> it is a very funny. I'm Dean. Yeah. It's a big, it's, it's, it is a dirtbag Dean, but it is kind of funny. It's a dirtbag Dean, and it's almost like, uh, you don't get to say anything, Sam. I've earned this. Yes. You keep lying to me. I'm going to keep making fun of you. Yes. Seems petty, but it's kind of fun. And it's not like I've ever done that to one of my siblings. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Sam's insisting that it might be possible for Jack to resist the transformation into an Orugaru because one of the things that he reads is that like hey there are there are stories where people if they don't eat they just human never meat, take that final step yeah. so he's like yeah I mean he's gonna be hungry forever he's gonna be eating a lot of gross raw meat but yeah. like it's not a done deal that this guy is an irretrievable monster. Well, and Sam's point is like, I'm not going to kill someone that hasn't done something to deserve to be killed. That's not what we he do. He hasn't hurt anyone. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know about the bar thing, but he's like, he hasn't yes. hurt anyone. He's not killing people. We, we can't just kill pre, like, pre-crime. Like, yes. <laughs> we can't do minority report shit. But also, I mean, this goes back to the vampire thing, right? Which yeah. is like, it's like, there are we, we met vampires who and don't the eat werewolf humans. shit. Yeah, so it's like we've we have proof that like monsters cannot be monsters. Like, why yep. shouldn't we give this guy a chance? And the ghost shit, even yeah, like we're like the yeah. one like, didn't even know they were a ghost. It's like, what happens when you banish me? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, like they've got enough evidence to say that like maybe monsters aren't all. It's not just fucking black and white. Like and demons. And then yes. of course the most important layer to this is Sam now having to grapple with the fact that angels want him to stop or they're going to kill him. And he's like, I've got a demon in me I, there. I must believe that I'm not irretrievably. Exactly. Bad. Exactly. It's the Frodo and Gollum thing. Yes. I have to be able to come back from this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, God. Yeah. I guess that is what that is. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause Sam's like, he's, he's evil. He's, yeah. we can't trust him. And Frodo's like, we have to trust him. Yeah. Or there's no point to this. Yeah. Or I'm just going to become that. And I can't accept yeah. that. I didn't even think about that. Oh, I'm always thinking about that. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Easy, Philip. (laughs) Yeah. I'm thinking I'm Philip. Oh, yeah. Now it's not even themes anymore. It's just just like lines. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go home, Philip. I know Philip. (laughs) That's the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know Kung Fu. I get it. Uh, Jack returns home, apologizing to his wife. They begin to make out. Oh, yeah. This is ooh, tough to watch. Here's she, the thing. They don't do a bad job with it. It, it is. Y- yeah. You're conveying a very scary situation. Yes. And I think about as good a way as you can. Yes. But it is. I'm Like, is it necessary for this? I don't think so. No. Does it need to be in the episode? No. no. They handle it. They handle decently. it fine. But it is hard to watch it is a uh, he without it going all the way it is a sexually transgressive scene he still like rapes his wife like he, yeah he, he is ignoring her saying no yes it's bad right. and scary and yeah. i'm scared for her yes and i'm uh and it's there's a there's an element to this too which is it's not the show's not doing this on purpose. They're not making a statement or anything no. like that. But because the premise of the episode is what if this guy isn't too far gone? Yes. You have to lean to well, it didn't go all the way. Ugh. Maybe he's still a good guy in there and he just messed up. And that makes this scene really not work for me. Sure, yeah. Because fair. like really to me, that's the scene where it's like kill him. <laughs> theoretic like even though technically we're talking about whether or not he's eaten someone. That hasn't happened. You look at this scene and go like, he already is way too f- dangerously past the impulse control yes. thing. Travis is right. Yeah. That's it. Yes. He and, is clearly and because concerned of the pre- over his Because actions. of the premise of the episode and then also having this scene, you're almost like accidentally saying like, 
unless he full went all the way, yeah. it doesn't matter. And he's still a good guy. He just made a mistake. Yeah, and fair. I really, it, I really dislike viscerally dislike that yeah. in this scene this scene sucks yeah uh i have a real problem with it he is really concerned over his actions and does realize what he had done but and again sure yeah it's the yeah it's and, the, and, and I, I, again like the scene is effective in how scary it is you know we're t- you, you talk about totally like, the how supernatural executes its horror yeah. or thriller element yep. it is a very scary effective scene but th- is it the is that the only way yeah, you I could know. show uh, yeah. the danger of this like it, I, I don't know it's i had a really hard time watching it fair yeah. totally fair as they travel to talk to jack uh dean charges sam with over identifying with jack he yes. basically calls out he's like he's like you don't want to kill him because it's you like because it's yeah dean is like here's the subtext of the episode yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Let me tell you a little something about what this episode's about, Sam. Yeah, I don't think they needed this scene either. I mean, I, I get it, but it is yes. it is maybe slightly on the nose. <laughs> but then Sam ordered Dean to stop the car. Uh, yeah. And uh, he tells, they, they get out and he tells Dean how hard it has been living with the knowledge that he is contaminated with demon blood. He's like, this is why I don't want to tell you. It's I will tell you. excuse. I Sorry, watched Sam, this last but... night. I watched this last night and I literally out loud said, then get a fucking blood transfusion. Like, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't get blood out of you. That's not what a, what a blood transfusion. Does. I thought you can like change the blood in. No, you. no, no. You can put blood in. You can. If you take circul- blood out and put blood in at the same I time. I guess, but like, I don't think it's like every molecule of blood makes it. But out maybe of it'll like whatever. lower the amount of demon blood in and you. Also, though. can you just get an elective blood transfusion? I mean, they're fucking demons. I'm sure they could get blood and do it. Like, if you take enough blood out and put enough blood in, it'll be new blood. I take your points, but also, I mean... all We have some people who work in hospitals here. Let us know if this is true. every cell in your body basically refreshes every seven years. But Sam has, hasn't had to re-up the demon blood infusion from before. So I think we're dealing with something that is beyond biologically that there is... De- also, the blood was dropped in his mouth, not put into his... Like, hmm. like I, I think we're dealing with something beyond what you could medically deal with Mm, maybe you're right uh and but he's like i'm contaminated with this thing and i'm just trying to make the best of it yeah uh the boys i mean he you know here's the thing he's it's i'm gonna need you to suck the demon blood (laughs) Um, (laughs) all of these things are gotta be real things that exist (laughs) um just suck and spit dean yeah suck and spit you can pull it from the main vein (laughs) I, I mean, God, the people listening to this show must get fucking whiplash where we're like, this is a really like, <laughs> sexually transgressive scene. And then the next scene, we're like, what if brothers fucked? <laughs> like, what a fucking like the whiplash of sensitivity to like, who gives a shit. <laughs> as long as we stand up for the things that are that need to be that are important yes. and actually happen. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, but yes. Um, Jared doesn't do that bad of a job here. I'll no, I, I actually, despite everything that we say and the jokes that we've made at the top of this episode, yeah. this is a pretty good Jared episode. This scene is, yes. I think generally. Sure. I think this is a good one because we already had the good scene of the kind of like. Yeah. Uh, all the realizations he was having yeah. and, and shit like that. This is a good scene. He's fresh from Hawaii. He's feeling good. He's I ready like to act. the scene of him arguing with Travis and stuff. And, you know, like, I, I actually think this is a good Jared episode. Right. The Am boys I forgetting something? No. Uh, the boys try to talk to Jack. They go to him. He's, like, watering. Just, like, weirdly, like, mindlessly watering in his backyard. But just, like, an open hose. Yes. Like, it's yeah, not yeah. even, like, a sprayer. It's, it's just dripping down. Even, it's just, like... Just water coming out the end of the hose. He's just standing perfectly still. Yeah. And they try to tell him of his uh, and his father's real status as a Rougarou. Yeah. Uh, as as well as what that will will happen if he consumes human flesh. Yes. He's taken aback by this uh, unbelievable story and he orders them to leave his property or he's going to call the authorities. I, I, got a, I got a question here. Sure. In a slightly later scene... We hear like a voicemail or something from his wife that says like, I don't know where you are, where you've gone. Like, come come home. I'm worried about you. Like, blah, blah, blah. 
but if he was just outside, I'm wondering, are we implying that he's watering someone else's garden mindlessly? No, <laughs> I thought that at home. Wasn't that when he went to the bar? No, 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 no. It's after the, it's after the gross scene. Is it? We get another one of those. Like, I just, I'm worried about you kind of things. And, but if he's watering his own, I assume he's just back then. Because they, they knew where to find him. I guess. But then where is... But the call comes later. Does it? Because I remember clocking that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I've got it, maybe I've got it backwards. I think but, you must. Okay. But um, they then trail Jack that night. Yeah. Uh, and see him uh, uh, outside of an apartment building, looking up at a woman like getting dressed uh, yeah. in, in her window. He keeps getting these like like cellular vision yes. of like blood. It's 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 and... such a classic like body changing image that you've seen in movies and TV forever. Yeah, I mean the the episode might as well be going like, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, doing that shit. You know, um, I did that once for a play. You were just the sound of a heart. Yeah, yeah. I like I had a mic and and I like was in the back of right. like behind the curtain going. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was cool. God, your career. I know. The places it's gone, and we'll go. Oh, <laughs> um, and they see him uh, trying to resist re- uh, uh, to like resist the urge, and then he starts climbing up the scaffolding up to this apartment building. And the guys were like, "Well, fuck! I guess we got to go kill him." And Is just it an as- apartment, isn't it his wife he's looking at through no, the window? No, it's just like some apartment building. Oh man, I watched this really late at night. He was like climbing scaffolding to get up, but I just thought it was like a trellis. Like no, it looked like scaffolding to me. It was definitely not. I swear wife. to God, both of us watched this episode. <laughs> yes, I did. Everyone will go. Yeah, Richard's right. I don't. Know. Um, but he revis because he resists the urge and then heads home. Oh, okay. Uh, well. Because also. Oh yeah, you're right. The way yes. the next scene will. Yes, you're right. Anyways, Sorry. Uh, and maybe that's when the call happened. Yeah, something like oh, oh maybe it's a setup. Yes. Oh, I didn't even think of that. So. Oh fuck. So. Travis, without consulting Sam or Dean, has broken into Jack's home. Yeah. And is holding his wife, Michelle, hostage. This is a bad few days for her. And learns that she is also pregnant. Yeah. We know how Travis feels about that. Well, this is the... I mean, listen, this guy playing Travis, I gotta say, he does a good job at this. Because we... It, it would does, be very easy to play him kind of like fucking Kubrick or someone yeah, like yeah. way too be like, it's the mission. Like, yeah. Whatever. No, he does shit. have like, he doesn't He's just like, I would give anything not to do this, yeah. but I, I already made this mistake once. I won't be here in 30 years yeah. to deal with your kid. I got to do this. It's, I got to kill you and your kid yeah. and your husband. Yeah. And like, yeah, the husband comes home and you kind of subdues him, ties him up and, He's going to burn them alive. He's like pouring gas. And he's like, I am so sorry. It's, it's a good moment. Like, I think those are kind of like, sometimes like the scariest. I know he's not the villain, but like the scariest, like antagonists are the ones that are like, I don't want to be doing this. I there's no other way. Yeah. Like, it's a, yeah, it works really well for me. Um, but Jack, Jack breaks free and attacks Travis. Yeah. With his blood vision. Yeah. He gets his str- <laughs> strength and shit. <laughs> uh, and he, he eats his he eats Travis neck. He does. It's fucked up. Yeah, and completes the transformation. Kind of looks like a little piece of jerky, though. Also, is this something that made you hungry too? <laughs> <laughs> Just with all that red all over his face, it looks so like, like strawberry jam. It looked delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm sorry. True. You are who you are. You can't fight your inhibitions. Um, oh God, I just. I just zoned out. It's got blood vision. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Travis's body is eaten until there is little left but a blood stain. It's pretty fucked. Like, how do you eat that much of a person? It's pretty fucked. Fucking crazy. And we see, like, way more of a physical transformation in Jack. It's, like, veiny. Kind of and... gray skin. And, yeah, it's all, like, kind of veiny and crinkly. And his eyes are kind of black and red. Yeah. And, yeah. Sam and Dean arrive and a fight ensues that leaves Dean unconscious and ba- and uh, Sam is locked in a closet, which we've seen before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. In, like season two. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, Because Sam's locked in a closet. No, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, I pull up my Beretta. 
He's a bad guy too. Oh, speaking of this episode, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. I walk up to the Philip. His name is the Philip. I don't think we should be promoting this song. We're doing the Philip. He's a bad guy. We're talking about a bad guy. Yeah. Using a bad guy song. But we're acknowledging he's bad. That makes it fine then? I guess. Sam encourages Jack. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. (laughs) Sam encourages Jack to resist his urges as he tries to break out using a coat hanger rather than his powers like he's done before. Yeah, because he's like. I can't use my powers. He's like, I'm done. I can't do this. Yeah. Because he's basically like. Now we're getting from Jack. He's like, I didn't want to have to do this, but like, I got to fucking eat you guys now. Yeah, it's just, it's, I, and Sam told me it was too yeah, late. Yeah, so. and Sam's like, no, but I mean, you could still try to not, you don't have to kill us because he's basically like, you haven't killed us yet. Yeah. You don't need to kill us. Yeah. Uh, but Jack can't resist and is about to eat Dean. It's kind of hot too because he's like smelling Dean and it like seems. I mean, he's living the dream. Yeah, except for the unconscious. Jesus. Right, this fucking episode, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. This, uh, uh, let's Sam just escapes. Say this episode succeeds at discomfort. Yep. Sam escapes and incinerates Jack. Yeah. And like no hesitation, which is is kind of interesting, too. It's like a real kind of commitment that he'll like do what needs to Maybe be done. Maybe the Sam that came back isn't the. Uh, Not 100% yeah, yeah, genuine yeah. Sam. Oh, my God. Uh, we then go to the Impala. Dean apologizes to Sam for being so hard on him. But Sam responds. Sorry for calling you a fucking nerd earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, not for the fucking demon stuff. I'm still worried about that. But yeah. Never, never for. But I guess you're not a total nerd. You're dweeb. Yeah. I did see you burn a guy alive. It's yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make that order extra crispy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Who wants chicken? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam responds by saying that he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. He says that he's made a choice. Not for Dean or God, but for himself. Stop using his powers. I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah. that's what it is, Sam. Yeah, not the fact that you heard God to stop telling you to do that, and then you yeah. stopped. I'm not doing this because of God yeah. and the threat of heavenly retribution. Yeah, no, it's for me. I'm doing this. I'm Sam. Yeah, and I would have done that had I not heard about the God thing. <laughs> Even though that's clearly the catalyst in the beginning of this episode of when Even I though stopped. I was 100% going to keep doing yeah. it until you mentioned God. Yeah, but this is not, it's not about him. Yeah. It's about, it's about this yeah. D.O.G. What do you think? I'm making my own decisions. Yeah. Hashtag team free will. Oh. All right. So this is the end of the episode. What did you think? I remember <laughs> it's a little complicated episode. It is. Remember, yeah. Kim Manners directed this. I remembered elements of this episode. Uh in particular the idea of like the trying to stop it before you cross the tipping point. Because that's a it's a good concept and it builds on stuff we've been doing over the last few seasons in the show anyway, of the kind of gray area of monsterdom and yeah. things like that. Listen, we got, you got it. You got to say, like, as far as what Kim Manners is bringing to this episode, like, this is a tense episode, very well directed from the what Sam is dealing with. You know, like the idea that like he thinks he he actually truly thinks he's doing good with a bad thing, and the angels are like, "We'll kill you if you keep doing it." And so the tension of him yeah. not sure if like like now thinking like, "Oh my god, I've been doing bad the whole time," but like. That's literally not what I was trying to Why do. Why did it feel so good? Yeah. So, like, there's the tension of that, the tension of, like, the execution of the scenes of all that kind of eating and chomping, and that is, like, really... Visceral. Yeah, yeah. Like, really effective. The the various violences and things that are visited are extremely uh, effective in terms of, like, the danger and the thrill and the scare and the... All that kind of stuff. I mean, again, it's not the episode did doesn't set out to do this thing specifically. Yes, but because we're meant to believe in his ability to stay human and come back, then the choice to have a very sexually transgressive scene becomes, uh, but he's still a good guy, and yeah. The episode ends with, no, he fell. He was a bad guy. So I guess maybe the moral is, no, you're not. But it does still kind of feel like a, we already passed the point. 
the episode's telling us it's the eating meat, but we saw kind of a worse thing. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, it, it, it just, it, it feels off kilter uh, and bad and f- extremely uncomfortable. And so, I mean, in terms of the emotional storytelling, it's extremely effective and well done, but it's... Some stuff is unnecessary. It's, yeah, it kind of feels... Exploitive? Flippant with yes. it. Yeah, like yeah. a little, like, and what if he did this? Yes. And then we'll move on and we'll never come back to that. And she'll still be, you know, kind of, like, when she's all tied up, she's like, save me, guy who tried to violate yeah. me. Like... We never come back to it, so it just feels... This show has a problem. It feels throwaway in the way that the Bella shit felt throwaway. Yeah, exactly. This show has is still having some struggles with being flippant about sexual assault. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is it is a problem. Because um, it really takes away from the other stuff that's good in this episode. Oh, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a tough one. I like that they they in many ways better define a Rougarou than the actual legend does, especially the differentiation from a werewolf and yeah. things like that. I, I like those elements. I uh, again casting great all around. That's a classic supernatural thing. Uh, Travis is really good. Uh, I love that kind of like. I'm really sorry. I would give anything not to do this. Yeah, it's like, a great way to play. He's it. He's great. Yeah. I think Jared is good in this episode. I think I'm gonna give this one. Just because of those kind of other elements, I think I'm giving this 3.5 tasty raw beefs. <laughs> wow. Is that what you're calling Jensen now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me some tasty raw beef. I, um, I, I, I definitely always remember this episode. This yeah. is one that definitely sticks in my head a lot. I mean, a Rougarou is a thing that I, we, I like, we may get one more other time, but I don't know. Or just offhand, yeah. or as like a cold open yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's not a thing that like, comes very often. It kind of reminds me of like a Wendigo, right? Like it's. A, I do feel like it. It does get relegated to that where they're like, "Oh, what is so and so doing?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, it's a Rougarou two stage." Yeah, over. Like, yeah, they talk yeah. about it like, like it's that, a good yeah. reference point, and it's a thing they can use again. And it's not all just like vampires and ghosts and yeah. demons, which I like. Um, that there's a larger world of other types of monsters and stuff. I think. I mean, it's a pretty Dean light episode, but he, he does get a few decent moments. Yeah. It is definitely a more heavier Jared episode. And for Jared in season four, this is uh, definitely a good episode. You're speaking, you really like want to hold back the praise. <laughs> yes. I think um, the guy who plays the like the Jack does a great job. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Like he plays the transformation really well. He pre- he he pre- his tra- own fear of what's happening and the transformation. And, like it's yeah. a good sort of slow transformation into it. Like yeah, I mean, especially when you're using the word metamorphosis, you're invoking Franz Kafka. You're invoking yeah. like the actual metamorphosis book. Uh, you're the, the things that are referenced from that, like the fly, all these slow transformation, horrific kind of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he does do a good job. Of there's that. some good body horror in this. Yeah, like, yeah. there's a great direction. Um, I, I, yeah, it, it's for me. It's it's really like there's some unnecessary like writing pieces in this that I don't. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even talk about like even the stuff with Ruby in the beginning. Like, God, this slut, you bitch. Blah, blah. It's that kind of like they still haven't grown out of the like. How badly can we treat a woman to show that things are bad? Which is interesting because it was... Like, now, I mean, at the end of the day, like, one person gets a writing credit usually, but it tends to be more than one person, so I don't want to put it all on them. But it is interesting that it, it was a woman that wrote this episode. Yeah. I I, I, I don't know what that means, but it is a, a, a thing yeah. to point out. I, I, I Well, yeah, I mean, being a woman writing an episode doesn't mean that everything you did is all of the sudden fifth wave feminism either. No, right? no, like no, 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 uh, not not at all. And so I, I, I don't know what that means, but it is a thing to be. I think it would be if it one thing if it was just like Kripke wrote it, you'd be like, fuck, man, like I, it's 2008. Because I do feel like some of the other episodes where we've pointed this out, it's been like, yeah, it's been like. A dude yeah. writer potentially, like, or even Kripke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but. and 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 I think I can only be so like judgy about it because I know how better it gets. And the show does a real conscious like improvement. I mean, yes. we've already seen it to this point, but the show does 
actively continue to grow and get better yeah. and move past this kind of shit. Totally. Yeah. But it, 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 there is some tough parts of this, which is like part of just like a representation of where TV is back then, right? Yeah. But like, I think if you're, if you're looking with, I think it's always important to look with a, an understanding, but like conscious eyes when th- you're looking at old media. I think the ultimate problem that we're, we're circling the drain on yeah. is that the wife yes. is a prop. Yes. Without getting killed, she is fridged yes. in this episode. 100%. She is there only for him to be like, oh, did I hurt her? Oh, no, me. But what we this episode could be the lens of what happens when you're watching someone metamorphose. They do it you a bit. You know what I mean? Like, they give her a few moments. But, they, it, but it's not... But it's not th- from her perspective. No, like, no. We get moments of her on screen and registering things, but we don't... The episode isn't from that, where the yeah. guys come to her and say, this is happening to your husband. We need to stop him before it gets there. They come to him. They don't... You know, she, he, he fucks up and attacks her, and then we follow him to the bar. We don't follow yeah, her yeah. dealing with it, and then Travis showing up and she going, is there any way to... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah. The, the lens of the episode fridges her Without yes. actually killing her, but yes, they do give her a couple months. Like she isn't total like one hundred percent like bitch wife sort of yeah. like stereotype, but she does have a couple moments where she like calls him on like why the fuck did you just leave? Like I had to do with all of this hospital stuff. I had to drive myself to the hospital alone, which I like that they did that, and she fights him off, which is good. Yeah, but I, but again, it's yeah, she shouldn't have had to, and it sucks that. And, that and they... again, it happens, and then we leave her to follow yes. him yeah, instead yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not her story. Yes. Right? Like and, totally. and that's the problem, I think. Um but again, great directing, Kim Manners uh RIP. <laughs> um and yeah, I mean like great acting all across the board. What? Oh, I was just thinking to myself. I might actually lower my to three point two five. I think I'm going to match what you were at, which is sure. three point five delicious bowls of pe- uh, bar peanuts Ooh, fine you can have those as long as i get the meat the bar peanuts did look tasty yeah. the bar penis peanuts mm. the bar peanuts hey can i get some more bar peanuts <laughs> whatever comes comes <laughs> <laughs> uh all right are you gonna lower it i did wow I did. you're so you're 3.25 i'm 3.25 you're 3.5 wow. but we're still like ballpark buds yes so. uh all right well that is it for this week um did you have any thoughts on this episode uh, uh like where do you stand on sort of all the stuff that happened here yeah uh we're always interested on different perspectives yeah specifically from women i, I like I, yeah yeah you yeah. know like we could only talk about how it made us feel and what yeah. we thought about it but did it, like are we alone in this thought? Like, yeah. is, is uh, are we being sensitive? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. let knows? us know how you feel. Uh, also, uh, anybody who works in the medical field, can you just completely change someone's blood? Yeah. Could you 100% flush old blood out and replace it with new blood? I'm curious. Uh, you can you can ask those questions and answer those questions at ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com. That's right. Or go to our various social media platforms. Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe so you can get our episodes automatically in your feed every single week. Uh, we got a review at the beginning of this episode. We want those reviews, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, five stars if you get them from your like uh, Apple podcast feed. but uh, And on Facebook, I think we can we, we get notified. But basically anywhere else, if you could just take a screenshot of the places where you give those yeah. five-star review, we'll they read re- them. They really help, too. You know, on, on Apple Podcasts, we've, we've actually started to like make the lower end of like the hundreds charts for after shows in the US and Canada. Uh, yeah. Not, not just internationally. Yeah, those reviews really, really help us. So, so yeah, those help. But yeah, if you if you give us a review somewhere else, wherever you listen to podcasts or something, just send a screenshot and we'll read it on the on the show. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, if you want to show the whole world how much you love it beyond the review, you can buy our merch at yeah. ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. Uh, and if you want even more fun content beyond what you're already getting once a week from us, we have a whole other podcast that is relevant to your interest, I think. Yeah, it's called the Dr. DC Podcast. We talk about DC Comics and superheroes. We answer listener questions. It's, you know, we talk about lore of magic over here. We talk about lore of magic over there, too. Yeah. And there's a lot of connections. We talked about it last week, how Supernatural is heavily inspired by some very iconic comics like Sandman and Hellblazer and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, we talk about those and a whole bunch of other things. So if you enjoy how we talk about stuff here, you might enjoy that over there too. Also, we use the term uh, fridging uh, in this episode. That is a comic book reference that we, uh, I'm sure we touch on on one of our episodes. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
that's it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk.